All right, folks, uh, welcome to Minnesota. We're going to try and do this outside. It's not a terrible day for uh, Minnesota, but a little windy, might be yelling against the breeze, so we'll do the old uh, hotel room special, and uh, Raptors better have the, uh, the wind special going because the, the schedule toughens up. I mean, Oklahoma City was a bad loss, but if they can string together two wins against teams that you would think that they could beat. What are you beat. talking about? They've won two or three. Isn't, That's right. Oh, yeah. isn't, isn't all good? Yeah, two or three. I forgot. <laughs> the parade is back on, right? Well, and, and, and it Bloor, does... down young, <laughs> cross front, down bay. And maybe if you don't end it at the ACC, let's go down bay to Queens Key, you know, on the waterfront. That's right. Okay, maybe not. All right, all right. Anyway, four tough games coming up after this one. Utah, Denver... And then I think where the season could be made in terms of playoff positions in Miami and then the back-to-back -back in Charlotte. Yeah, it's a tough stretch coming up, no doubt. So that's why you put so much importance on this game tonight because, you know, Jose Calderon said it today when we were chatting with him. You know, these are the games you've got to take care of business. You can't afford it. And, and if, you, if you think about it, really, look back at the schedule. There have been few letdown games. I know yeah. recently it recently hasn't been pretty. Let's, let's be straight about that. And uh, you can think to that Philadelphia game for sure. You can think on the road against Golden State. In spite of the tempo they play, still one of the league's worst teams. But over the course of the season, I don't think there have been a ton of letdown games. Games that they've lost have been to a lot of quality opponents. And I know yeah. you've been on that stat a bunch of times in terms of, you know, teams with records above 500, teams with records below 500. And, uh, you know, even the, even the best teams in the league, they do what they're supposed to do against the bad. And... You know, they, they're average against the good. Yeah. The, the elite teams, obviously, still find a way to win. And it'll be interesting to look at, and we'll have to break it down. Let's go check the blogberry, the, the blackberry, well, uh, the blogberry, the blackberry, while well, Jonesy's talking here. Well, I'm waiting on the, something that we might include in this. Okay, well, you know, there, there's a lot of games left for Toronto against teams that have a 500 or better record and teams that they're going to have to fight with in the playoff hunt. I mean, you know, we talked about the, the next four with, with Utah, Denver, um, uh, Miami, and Charlotte, but they've also got an Atlanta in there. Yeah. They've got Boston in there. They've got Cleveland in there. So there are a lot of good teams still to play. And interesting, when I talked to Alex English this morning, you'll hear that interview at halftime. He said confidence is the main thing. He looks back at the way they played in the middle of the season and beating some good teams they were confident. They got to get the swagger back. They got to get wins, even if it's over New Jersey and Minnesota, to start feeling good about themselves and then be kind of in a good frame of mind when they play the better teams. And uh, a team like uh, like Minnesota tonight, as, as much as they've struggled and they've got the worst uh, record in the Western Conference, when you just look at matchups, and that's why certain teams have other clubs' numbers, uh, Toronto should win this game, absolutely. I, I, I'm not saying it's a must win, but it's damn close to a must yeah. win in terms of the, the schedule coming up. And, and this is a game you look at and say, we win that game. Now, that said, Kevin Love, Al Jefferson, even Darko, just the size for a team that's somewhat undersized or at least the, physically playing down low, Toronto's got to make sure that they try and match up against those big banging bodies down low. And Jay Triano said one of the keys, if you look at the last four or five games for, for Minnesota, their opponents have been 25-plus or, or close to it and even 30-plus in some of those games in transition points and on the fast break. So it's going to be important for Toronto to be athletic tonight and use their speed to try and combat some of that bulking size that the Timberwolves do have. Yeah, big guys got to get out there and run. And interesting, if you have a chance to watch any of the game tonight or take a look at the highlights after, you notice that the uh, Timberwolves, Kurt Rambis, a Laker guy, they're running the triple post offense. They've stayed with it all year. And, uh, you know, from talking to Alex English, he said, you know, Darko's not bad in there. He's a pretty good passing big man. Um, the ball moves pretty well. I mean, and then they've got the other side of it where Al Jefferson is almost like the classic post-up guy. So it'll be something to keep an eye on Minnesota's offense tonight and how Toronto's defense reacts and how well they play them. All right, as always, it's uh, coming up around noon as we're recording this, at least noon Minnesota time. So lunchtime, we got a little work to do as well. And uh, I'm still trying to recover from the beating that Jonesy handed me this morning down on the basketball court. Minnesota is one of the places yeah. where they have the gym. Minnesota, Washington, Boston. Usually we're teammates. Today we had to split it up, and uh, he, but, he handed it to me. But but when we were teammates, there were like four or five different games. When we were teammates, the radio crew. And I did beat him in seven up. I yeah, mean, still I don't think that really counts. He for makes much. free throws. Hey, yeah, you can I, make free throws. I just got to I just got to get to the line. But the way I was shooting today, I wasn't doing anything. Anyways, time to go.